Hi guys, so today I want to talk about dog wee burns. When your dog wees on your lawn and burns the grass and leaves a horrible dead area that just looks unsightly. I'm going to talk about prevention and I'm going to talk about how to fix. So let's talk a few things first. So when it comes to preventing a dog wee burn, there's a few things that you can do and try. They're all pretty much hit and miss, but work for some dogs and not for others. It's always worth a shot. Now the first thing I always tell people is to try tomato ketchup. You just put a little bit in with the dinner, and for some dogs it does work, and for other dogs it doesn't. And there doesn't seem to be any reasoning as to which dogs will it will work for and which dogs it won't work for. Now the second thing you can try are dog rocks. You can buy them online. I'll leave links for everything down below in the description if you want to check those out. So dog rocks basically help to filter out all the impurities like the ammonias, the um, tin, nitrates, things like that. Things which can burn the lawn. It's basically urea and urea is actually what's in fertiliser and if you put too much fertiliser down you're going to burn your lawn so it's a similar thing. Now in general some people will say it's smaller dogs that burn the lawn or it's bigger dogs that burn the lawn. Well actually it's how the dog urinates which will burn the lawn. If they tend to squat so that when they're weeing it's very close to the ground it will hit the ground in a concentrated spot and seep out and often you'll get a burn mark in the middle with a ring of really lush green grass around it and, and it does that because as the liquid seeps out it, it actually becomes a really good fertilizer and if you could bottle that you'd be onto a winner so you could water things down as soon as you see the dog do a wee go out and put some water on and dilute it and that will help Another thing you could do is section a part off, so the, the dog only goes on one particular section and then that way the rest of the lawn's okay. Or other than that it's going out for daily walks. And the final thing you can do is look at training your dog to go on a certain spot. And you could pick a certain spot, you could put some pebbles down and it means going out with your dog first thing in the morning with the lead on and staying in that spot. Even if it takes you an hour, you stay there until the dog's been to the toilet first thing in the morning and keep repeating it day after day after day and eventually the dog will want to go to that area and they'll associate that area with weeing. So now we're going to talk about fixing dog wee burns. I'm going to be using some basic tools here to fix this patch but I also want to discuss other things that you can do as well. So something else you can do is actually take some grass seed and grow some grass seed in a few plant pots and just have them down one wall in the sun you're gonna to have to cut them from time to time with some shears but if you grow some grass then as soon as your dog does a burn you can dig that out and go down a couple of inches pull that out and replace with the plant pot straight into the hole and then you've got instant grass with roots established back in there so that is one of the best things I can recommend for you to do. So it doesn't matter if you've got six or seven or eight plant pots down one wall, they come in handy and you can patch repair things within a couple of minutes. So now we're going to crack on. So here are some of the things you might want and you might want to use. We've got some compost and some grass seed. We've got a shovel and we've got a manual lawn aerator. We've got a selection of rakes and we've got a little bit of topsoil in these bags. So let's show you what we've got to do. The first thing we have to do is prep the area. So in terms of preparation, there's a couple of things you can do. Now, any other patch in your lawn, you can just use a rake. These are springbok or springtime rakes as they're sometimes called. This is a bulldog brand. It's my personal favourite, been using these for years, in fact this one's probably 10 year old. But it's got the fixed piece of metal which makes it nice and rigid. Now if this was just a normal patch anywhere else in the lawn, it wasn't a dog burn. We just rake the area and trying to rake out the dead matter. 
Now to speed things up, you could use one of these scarifying brakes by Wolf Garton. Again, I'll leave links for all of these in the description. 10 year warranty on the hand on the on the products. We've got an ashwood handle and all the ends are interchangeable. You have to buy that and you have to buy that. But once you've got it, they're worth the weight in gold. So these scarifying blades are really sharp. But you just rock it backwards and forwards and it's taking out the dead matter and it's putting grooves into the soil, a bit like a farmer's field. And farmers do this so that they can sow the seeds. And we're just following something similar. What we're looking for is nice and loose and crumbly and fluffy soil. So wherever there's dead grass, rake it out. Now, you could use a garden rake, but they're not as effective. So if you went to a, a plain patch here, yes, it's raking out some of the matter, but it doesn't really churn up the soil. So it's not preparing the soil ideally, although it is removing the matter. You can get little hand tools as well. There is a little hand tool by Wolf Garten that's handheld and it's got three metal prongs. And I've got one in the van, but it's under a load of tools. So I'm not going to show it you, but I'll put a picture up. See, I'm going at different angles, so it's, it's churning the soil up at different angles. So once you've given it a good rake, use a normal leaf rake to rake off the dead matter. Now this again, it's the Bulldog leaf rake, plastic handle. I'll link to all of these in the description if you want to get the same products. So I'll link to everything in the description anyway, if you want to do the same with the same equipment I use. Now for a normal seed patch, that would be absolutely fine. Where, wherever it's just gone a bit thin, like in corners. But when it's a dog burn, what happens is that some of the urine will seep down a little bit into the soil and it will contaminate the top few centimetres of the soil. So you need to agitate the top centimetre or so a little bit better. So you've got a few choices. The first choice is to take a spade and dig out. So you could dig out all the way across the top few centimetres. The next choice is just to heavily agitate even more. So really good heavy agitation. It's all in the preparation. The longer you spend on the preparation, the better the result every single time. And yeah, you'll be sat there, stood there, wanting it to uh, be done. But all the best things come to those who prepare. It's a lot more agitated there. Right. So again, you just need to rake off any debris that you've found. 
but that is pretty much mostly soil now a couple of bits there so even though it looks a mess we've got good prepared soil which is what we call a seed bed now something else you could do is use a garden fork and just fork the spot or you can use one of these manual lawn aerators these are hollow tine aerators because they've got hollow tines you push down soil comes up and soil ejects and it improves drainage in that area so it's all going to help and the more of these things that you do the better the chances of success you want success to come into your favour now I appreciate I've got all the fancy tools but I built them up over 20, 22, 25 years something like that and you know I started off with just a 10 year old mower and a really cheap rake like this that's what I started off with and years ago I used to hand scarify lawns although I didn't do many because it was back breaking right the next step we're going to use some topsoil and seed you could put a little bit of fertiliser on at this stage but I'm not going to because we've got plenty of moisture so I'm just hand scattering some seed like so and a little bit of compost just to get some organics into the ground some of that compost goes down the ground and we start to improve the soil getting some organics into there now if you haven't got topsoil you can just use compost and the compost will cover the seed but if you have dug out using a spade you will need some topsoil just to bring the levels back up so we have seed which is touching soil and some good compost and now we're going to use topsoil so again I'm just scattering it around filling in the worst parts stone there So yeah, you just you just put your soil down and you're just building the layers up. You could put it into piles and rake it about if you want to. At any rate, we'll do this. Even a brush will work fine. Now, if you've gone down, depending on how far you've gone down with your spade, you might need a bit more soil. But after applying, say, a centimetre, I would walk across it or use your hand and pat it just to firm that layer down. and then apply your second layer so you don't get sinkages later on down the line so it's all in the preparation and the better you prepare you take your time 
the better the outcome will be. The main thing is, is taking out as much of the dead matter that's been killed off by your dog and preparing the soil so it's nice and loose and agitated. Our bags of topsoil are only a few pounds. Now you could put your seed on, like at this stage now, instead of earlier. But I wanted to put a bit on to make sure some went down the aeration holes. Just in case we get any really heavy wind or rain, at least there are some seeds in there which will have some degree of protection from the elements, from birds, etc. So if you wanted to put some more seed on, and there's no harm in putting two lots on, but don't go too heavy with it because you'll have too many seeds in the same area. But this last layer of seeds, you still need to cover them. So you want to be using a bit of compost or topsoil. And you can just scatter it over, rub it between your hands. And that is pretty much it. So one last firm down. Now sometimes if your boots are wet, you'll find it lifts and sticks to your boots. If that's the case, just use your hands to pat it down. You can always finish off with just a gentle rake. Now it's worth doing it because the surrounding grass may have clumps of soil or compost but just a gentle rake just to even out the levels a little bit because you always get a few bumps when you've walked upon it and there you have it so that is how I prepare and fix and deal with dog wee burns in the lawn and any other patches in the lawn. It's a fairly simple process. Now we've got a couple of other patches. We've got an area around here which will thin every year because we're in a shaded corner and it will thin out if it's not getting at least three hours of direct sunlight. And there's just a couple of patches here between these pavers where they've walked over winter and it's just worn down. So I'll crack on with those. If you've got any questions, comments, pop them in the comments down below. I want to help you with your lawn, but hopefully this video has helped to explain the steps you need to take when you're trying to fix patches in your lawn. Patches happen sometimes for whatever reason, sometimes there's hardcore under the soil and it might, it might be pebbles or anything, bricks, all sorts of things uh, buried in people's gardens. You want at least two to three inches of soil for a decent lawn. Ideally six to eight inches for a high quality lawn of soil. If you're finding hardcore a couple of inches down, it might be best to dig it out and replace it with fresh soil. Build it up a couple of inches, firm it down, keep building it up so it's nice and firm when you come to the top layers. All right, any questions, comments, please and leave them down below. Remember, check out the description for links to all the products that I'm using. So uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one.